We're going to start by talking about polygons. Uh, polygons are shapes that have um, many sides. Um, when you're making a polygon, all of the side lengths are straight. They can't be curved. It also has to be a closed shape, meaning that you can't have um, a side length that's left open. Um, so I couldn't have something that looked like this. That would not be a polygon. Um, and that's what we need to know for what we're doing right now. So with our polygons, we have a whole bunch of different kinds of shapes. So the one that we've been focusing on recently is triangles. Um, then we also have quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are ones with four sides. Okay? We also have a specific kind of quadrilateral that we're going to focus on today. It's called a parallelogram. So uh, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, um, meaning that it's also a polygon because a quadrilateral is a polygon with two pairs of parallel sides. So this figure up here is a parallelogram because we have A and B is parallel to DC and A and D are parallel to BC. Remember that the arrows that match mean that they're parallel. So these have two arrows, so those are parallel. These have one arrow, so they're parallel. Um, we also have something that you need to know, another vocabulary word that's called the diagonal. The diagonal is a segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices. So consecutive means next to each other. So this is why in this picture, B is next to A or consecutive, and D is also next to A or consecutive. So we can't create an, a diagonal with A and D because they're next to each other, or A and B because they're next to each other. So if I create a diagonal, it has to go from uh, one vertex to the non-consecutive vertices. Okay? So if you had, uh, for example, the shape of a stop sign, a relatively horrible stop sign, but <clears throat> here I could have a diagonal that goes here, I could have it go to here, I could have it go to here, have it go to there, and to there, and I'm not drawing very straight either. Um, but those are what diagonals are. I can't have one going from here to here because those are consecutive, and I also can't have one going from here to here because those are consecutive. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that we have is when we're talking about a parallelogram. So if we look here, this is just the same triangle that's been rotated and then repeated and rotated and repeated. So notice that if we take this triangle and rotate it, that the pink matches the pink and the blue matches the blue and the green matches the green. Okay? So it's just been rotated over and over. So because uh, when you rotate, you know that the lines are parallel. So this line is parallel to this line. You also know that these lines are parallel. Okay? And we also did this when we looked at parallel lines, right? So if you've got a set of parallel lines, these are parallel lines, and then this would be a transversal. So notice the pink are alternate interior angles, and notice they're congruent. The blue are also alternate interior angles, and they are also congruent. Um, and then if we look at this fact that this is a triangle and this is a triangle, we have two angles that are the same, right? The blue matching the blue and the pink matching the pink. So that means that the green ones have to match each other. So then we know all of the angles are the same. So what happens is that we can use this piece of information to help us come up with some other theorems that help us understand um, parallelograms that we can use to find missing uh, measurements. Okay? The, uh, so for example, back on your notes, um, we're going to skip the interior angles one for a minute. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its opposite sides are congruent. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its opposite angles are congruent. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its diagonals bisect each other. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its consecutive angles are supplementary. And a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if it has a pair of parallel and congruent sides. Okay, so if we go back to here, notice if we use this shape as our parallelogram, that if we put pink and blue together, that will create this whole angle. And notice this whole angle is pink and blue as well. And these are opposite angles in this parallelogram, so those are congruent. And then notice that the greens match, so those are congruent as well. So that's how we get in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. Um, now we also can use this for um, uh, consecutive angles. So these two angles right here. Um, so notice if we use these at a set of parallel lines, that this angle and this angle are consecutive interior angles. Remember it makes that C shape right here. 
So those are supplementary, which means that they add to 180. So that's why in a parallelogram, consecutive angles are supplementary. So these two are supplementary, these two are supplementary, these two are supplementary, and these two are supplementary, meaning that they add to 180. Okay. Um, we also had a theorem that said that the opposite sides are congruent. Well, this goes back to what you learned with congruent triangles. So <laughs> we know that this triangle and this triangle are all the same because this blue angle matches. This side is the same side length for both triangles. And then uh, this pink uh, angle of the triangle matches as well. So you have an angle and then a side and then an angle. So these two triangles are congruent by angle side angles. So then if they're congruent by angle side angle, we know that all of the corresponding sides are congruent. So this side is congruent to this side, and we know that this side is congruent to this side. So then we end up with that theorem that says opposite sides are congruent. Okay. Um, so we also have this one that says if, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, if and only if means that it's, the same forwards and backwards. So if I know opposite sides are congruent, I know it's a parallelogram. If I know opposite angles are congruent, I know it's a parallelogram. But you can also go the other direction. If it's a parallelogram, then I know opposite angles are congruent. If it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So that's what the if and only if part means. Okay? We also have a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its diagonals bisect each other. So again, if we look at our diagonals, this would be the other diagonal. I'm struggling to draw straight today. <coughs> this would be our other diagonal that we would have. Okay. We would know that these um, and these are bisected. So bisected means it's cut in half. So this distance is the same as this distance. And we would also know that uh, this distance is the same as this distance. So if the Diagonals are bisected, we know that it's a parallelogram. Or if it's a parallelogram, we know that the diagonals are bisected. Okay. Yeah, um, notice these are vertical angles, so we know that those are congruent in this triangle and this triangle. Then we know that this angle is the same as this angle, and this one is the same as this one. So then we have angle, angle, um, angle, which means that they're at least similar, so we need to find at least one other side that's congruent, but we know since the parallelogram, the sides are congruent, we now know these sides are congruent, so then we have um, the side, angle, side, angle that works. Okay? So that's how we come up with that one. We also have uh, where this last one where it says a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if it has a pair of parallel and congruent sides. So if we have a picture of a parallelogram, and I know that these are parallel and these are parallel. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm showing. Sorry, I missed true. So we've got, um, if we know that this one side and that same set of sides is both parallel and congruent, then we can show that this is a parallelogram and we know that these are congruent. Okay. And again, you can go backwards. So if I know this, then I know it's a parallelogram. If I know if it's a parallelogram, then I know you've got these parallel lines and that's congruent. Okay. Um, so that's another one to know. The last one um, that we skipped over momentarily was that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So it's kind of easier to see in this picture. So if we look at a quadrilateral, so we can look at this one right here. What happens is that you create a diagonal, and when you create a diagonal, I end up with two triangles. This is the first triangle, this is the second triangle. Well, we know that there's 180 degrees in this triangle, and we know that there's 180 degrees in this triangle. So that means in this full amount that has all of the angles of both triangles, that there has to be 360 degrees. You can do the same thing when it's not a parallelogram. So for example, if we take um, a trapezoid okay, and we create a diagonal. So here's our diagonal, but again, it makes two triangles. So we have 180 degrees in here and 180 degrees in here. So we end up getting 360 degrees for any quadrilateral because you can follow the same pattern of creating the um, 
the diagonal to split it into two triangles. Okay? So if we look down at the bottom problem that we have on our notes, we're going to forego this for the time being. If we look here, it wants us to find both A and B. <coughs> Let me find where I put my pencil. Oh, I don't know where it is. I guess we'll switch to the whiteboard. Oh, I found it. Okay, so then we have, um, if we want to find A, notice these are opposite angles, so those are congruent, so we can set those two things equal to each other. So we're going to do A plus 78 equals 3A. So now, remember when we're solving, we want to get the A's on the same side, so I'm going to subtract A over here. So I get 78 equals 2A. So then we're going to divide by 2. Right? So then uh, we're going to get uh, 39. So X is, oh, it should be A. I changed it to an X when I went here. Sorry. So 2A, so A is 39. Okay. So if I were to give you a picture that looked like this, When you have a parallelogram, so first of all, you have to either know it's a parallelogram or know that the sides are congruent. So the reason we know this one's a parallelogram is because we have, oh, oops, there we go. If we know this one's a parallelogram, because we know these are parallel and these are parallel, which is the definition of a parallelogram. So if I tell you that this angle here is 45 degrees and we want to find this angle, then we know that this angle is just 45 degrees. Okay. If I give you one that looks like this, <clears throat> where we've got this is parallel and these are parallel, and we know that this is 36x plus 2, and this is 38x minus 2, um, and then we call this T U U S. Okay. And we want to find angle S or the measurement of angle S. Oops. There we go. Now we can see better. So again, it's a parallelogram because we know these are parallel and these are parallel. So opposite angles are congruent. So we're going to set these two things equal to each other. So we're going to do 36x plus 2 equals 38x minus 2. So we're going to subtract 36x to the other side and add the 2. So then we get 4 equals 2x, so x is 2. But notice our question is find the measurement of s. So we have to go back to s, and we have to look. And then when we're looking at s, we can see that the s value is 38x minus 2. So what we need to do is we need to plug in 2 for s. So, or in for x rather so 38 times by 2 minus 2 so <clears throat> when you do 38 times 2 that gives you 76 minus 2 gives you 74 so then we know that the angle of s is 74 degrees so up here we would say s is 74 degrees so mind that you need to pay attention to what the instructions say. So this one said to find the measure of angle S, whereas on this one, it just asked us to find A and B. We just found A for the time being, but uh, it just asked us to find the variable so we didn't have to plug it back in. Notice that these are opposite, so I would set those two equal to each other and solve as well. Okay. Now, we also have a theorem <clears throat> about the sides of the diagonal. So if we look at this one, We've got um, when the diagonals are, uh, you've got the diagonals of the parallelogram, <coughs> you know that the diagonals are bisected. Bisected means that it's cut in half. So notice, the reason we know this is a parallelogram is because it says it's a parallelogram. <coughs> so now, we know that this amount's the same as this, and this amount's the same as this. So let's just find the z's for right now. So because these two are the same, we're going to set... 6z plus 1 uh, equal to 4z plus 9. 
So again, we want the z's on one side, so we're going to subtract the 4z and subtract the 1. So this gives us 2z equals 8. So we divide by 2, so z is 4. Okay. Again, I just am finding z on this one. I'm not going to do both of those right now. Um, now, if I give you one that looks like this, <clears throat> we're going to give you this picture. And I tell you that VB is 13, and we want to find VX. So again, VB is 13, and we want to find VX. So VB is 13, so V is here, and B is 13. Okay. We want to find BX. So our theorem says that if the diagonals on a parallelogram that they are bisected. So that means that these two are congruent. So that means that bx, which is this distance, also has to be 13. Now, I could give you one um, about the side lengths. So if we look at um, This one that's on your notes. Okay. Um, right up here. Um, notice the figures are below our parallelograms, so we know that these are parallelograms. So we can solve. So let's just solve for x. So if we're solving just for x, um, we've got that these two are equal. Oh, there's only x in them, so I guess that. Uh, so these two are congruent, so we can do x minus 3.5 equals 18.5. We could have also set these two equal to each other and got the same thing as well. So here we're just going to add 3.5. So when we do uh, adding these, remember the 0.5s are going to add to a 1. So then you're going to have 8 plus 1, which is 9, plus 3, which gives us 12, and carry the 1, and then we get 2. So 22.0, which is really just 22. So here our x is 22. Okay. If I give you a picture um, that looks like this, it's not a very well-drawn parallelogram, but um, if I give you this parallelogram and I say this is question mark and I let you know that this is 10, because these are opposite sides and we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then we know the question mark is 10. Okay. Um, now, one of the other theorems that we have is about the consecutive angles. So if we look at this problem that we have on the notes, notice instead of these angles being opposite, that they're next to each other or consecutive, which means that we want to have them be supplementary because these add up to 180 which should make sense if you um, notate this as parallelograms. So these are the parallel lines that we're looking at, and this is the transversal, and this is the part that makes the C for consecutive interior, or co-interior, or same side interior, whatever you call it, and then that these have to be supplementary. So we're gonna do 85 plus 11x plus seven equals 180. So then we need to combine our like terms. So 85 and 7 are like terms. So when we add those two together, we get 92 plus 11x equals 180. Again, we're trying to get the x by itself. So we're going to do 180 minus the 92. So if we subtract the 92 to the other side, we're going to have 11x equals 88. So then to get the x by itself, we're going to divide by 11. So you have x is 8. Okay. Um, now we can go the other direction with these theorems. Um, oh, I missed one. Let's look at the 
Um, the one that I'm referring to Oh, no, I got it. Sorry, never mind. Um, so then uh, we can also go the other direction and we can look and see if there's enough information on the figure to determine if it's a parallelogram. Okay, so remember, we either need to know um, that the opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals are bisected consecutive angles are supplementary, or if we have a pair of parallel and congruent sides, then we know it's a parallelogram. So if we look here, I know that this diagonal is bisected, but I have nothing about this diagonal. So I don't have enough information on this one to show that this is a parallel parallelogram, so not enough info. Okay. On this one, if we look here, Again, one of the things that we need to know if it's a parallelogram is that opposite angles are congruent. Well, these two angles are congruent and these two angles are congruent. So we do know that B is a parallelogram. So the way that uh, um, I abbreviate parallelogram is with the sign for parallel lines and then O-gram. So a parallelogram since opposite angles congruent. Um, so here, if we look at this one, this is not a poly polygon. This is not a parallelogram, right? So this is just a quadrilateral, meaning that it has four sides: one, two, three, four. So we have this theorem that says if you've got a quadrilateral, um, the sum of the measures of their interior angles is 360 degrees. So instead of adding to 180 like a triangle, we're going to add to 360 degrees. So I know that this plus this plus this plus this has to equal 360 degrees. So we're going to do 85 plus 110 plus 100 plus 66x minus 1 equals 180. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Okay. So then here what we want to do is we want to combine our like terms. So we're going to add 85 plus 110 plus 100 and that gives us 295. Oh, not 180. Sorry, I miswrote. It's not 180 because it's not a triangle. It equals 360 since it's a quadrilateral. Sorry, 360 since it's a quadrilateral. Uh, so we're going to add the 85 plus 110 plus 100 uh, and then subtract our 1. I almost missed the 1. So that gives us 294. So we have 360 equals 294 plus 66x. So again, we want to get the x by itself, so we're going to subtract the 294 to the other side. So we're going to do 360 minus 294, which gives us 66. So then we have 66 equals 66x. So then to get the x by itself, we're going to divide by 66. So then we're going to end up with x is 1. So if I were to give you another one, <clears throat> if I gave you this kind of shape, okay, so we want to solve for x on this one. Again, it's a quadrilateral, so we're going to add up to 360. So all of these are going to equal 360 degrees. So if I take this plus this plus this plus this, so we're really just adding all of these together, um, that will give us 360 degrees. So I guess I'll put my equal sign on this side. So 104 plus 80 plus 99 plus x plus 77 equals the 360. So again, we have to add all of our like terms. So the 104, the 80, uh, the 99, and the 77 are all like terms. So when we add those together, we get 104 plus 80 plus 99 plus uh, 77. It looks like a 27. 77. Sorry. That gives us 360. So we have 360 equals... 360 plus x. So then to get x by itself, we're going to subtract the 360, so we're going to have 0 is x. 
Now, we could also have one where it looks like this. So we have three of the angles are 90 degrees. So we're going to do 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 11x minus 9 equals 360. So 90 plus 90 plus 90 gives us 270. Oh, I forgot to subtract the 9. Well, I guess we can do it. Let me just check. Equals 360. So 270 minus 9 gives us 261. So then if we take 360 and we minus 261, it gives us 99. So we have 11x equals 99. So then we're going to divide by 11. So then x is 9. Okay. So that is the first part about parallelograms um, and quadrilaterals that we are looking at.